Somewhere there is a perfect kitchen. Where all the products do exactly as they say on the tin. All the superfoods are super. All the miraculous marketing claims are accurate. Is this science or just fantasy? There's one woman who is determined to find out the truth. To get behind the marketing hype. Are superfoods really super? Your marketing here suggests that we know it all and this is definitely proven. Is organic food healthier? What I'm not able to find are the, the studies that actually say this will cause harm. Why is it then that nobody's actually done the studies to prove it once and for all and just got rid of the argument? Can washing powders do what they say on the box? Tricky question now. If I was to go to one of your competitors mm. with a similar sort of product, yeah. would I get the same results? Professor Leslie Regan will uncover some uncomfortable facts. Now we'll be able to tell the truth about probiotics. But by the end, she will have a set of supermarket products that are, scientifically, worth their place in her kitchen. As one of the top obstetricians in the country, Professor Regan helps mothers deliver their babies here at St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington. Make sure that we've got an incubator ready. Has she delivered? She has, yes. I mean, I'm just desperate to have a baby. So, she's a scientist. She understands what a medicine does and knows that it's clinically proven to work. I worry about the fact that some of them are on the net. You immediately assume that they are scientifically valid. In Prof. Regan's world, scientific evidence matters. What will she think of the science in her local supermarket? Well, do you know, I'm very, very confused about this. I don't really know what probiotic means. I'm just looking at this, where it claims that it helps improve digestive transport. Do you but I, it? I'm no wiser. Proven to kill MRSA... E. coli, salmonella, and flu viruses. Absolutely extraordinary. Hmm. I've never met an argument that explains to me exactly why it is that people buy organic. And the ultimate in scientific marketing, superfoods. Here's an example, the superfoods bar. You see it says blueberries containing vital antioxidants. Look at this. Not just a pure fruit smoothie, but a superfood. And tells me as well that if I drink this, I will have a natural detox. Marvellous. So, the first contender for Professor Regan's scientifically proven supermarket trolley is... Superfoods. <laughs> Life used to be simple. We were happy with our ordinary foods. I can do a lot more with an apple. Ooh, you can with that cream. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. But now we're told that we need broccoli and kiwis, spinach and pomegranates. And the future could be really exotic. This stuff really does have a fairly instant effect, you know. With barley grass. So barley grass is an incredibly good source of iron, of calcium, of zinc. Or goji berries. They've been shown to be very good for the liver, and for your eyesight. They're a very good source of beta-carotene. Superfoods for super health. And I try and eat foods like this, superfoods, that are really rich in nutrients, and which make you feel fantastic, and that's the bottom line. We want to believe that they work. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they did? You are going to feel the benefits. And just generally more energy, you know? More, more vitality. What is new is that superfoods are now being touted as so powerful that they can help prevent cancer or even cure it. Some of the claims are bold. So Prof. Regan looks behind the headlines. Pomegranates. 
How does a food become a superfood? Well, try typing pomegranate and prostate into Google. Ah, so 523,000 hits for pomegranate associated with prostate. Now, prostate cancer kills one man every hour in the UK, so scientists are hunting for a cure. Pomegranate juice can significantly slow the progress of prostate cancer, the study suggests. But many of those 500,000 hits refer to just one small-scale piece of cancer research. So they focused on 50 men who'd had surgery or radiation treatment. They've compared how people do in terms of survival from prostate cancer uh, whilst drinking pomegranate juice, but not pomegranate juice compared to apple juice or onion juice or anything else, uh, or even any drug. And that small preliminary study has generated thousands of headlines for pomegranate juice. Funding for the study was received from a company which makes pomegranate juice. Now, it's early days in the research because, as the scientists told us by email, they haven't proved yet that there is anything uniquely healthy in pomegranates. So an awful lot of unanswered questions because we've got no comparisons. But the company is already promoting the life-enhancing properties of its juice. Britain's leading cancer charity, Cancer Research UK, doesn't recommend any particular food as a cure for cancer. Currently, there is no scientific research proving that superfoods will make us healthier than ordinary foods. It would take millions of pounds, thousands of volunteers and a lifetime to complete. Prof Regan is not that patient. She's keen to see if a preliminary study can detect any benefit, any clues to justify the marketing. Not a full-scale scientific study, but one that might give a first indication. So ten volunteers, pairs of identical twins, will alter their diet. Over a period of three weeks, one twin will eat two portions of ordinary fruit and veg. The other twin, two portions of superfoods. This is over and above what they usually eat, and their genetic similarity will help to limit any effects to the dietary changes. Now, the government's Food Standards Agency recommends that we eat five portions of fruit and veg a day. I would say probably two at the most. I don't eat the five. Uh, one at the moment. <laughs> only, maybe only one or two. Probably about um, four. I eat loads and loads of fruit. Five or six. And close your hands for me, please. So before we change their diet, what are their vitamin levels like now? Nutritionist Catherine Collins analysed the results. What was particularly interesting is that none of you were really deficient in anything. Um, and yet I think people tend to think of the UK diet as being not very good and, and we should be improving it all the time. Um, a so even though Anne and Mary claimed to eat only one portion of fruit and veg a day, their blood vitamin levels were OK. For the next three weeks, the identical twins will have different diets. It's extra ordinary foods versus extra superfoods. The superfoods cost four times the price. Will they be worth it? I think those of us on the superfoods will feel a definite change. I'm very, very interested to find out what happens. The results will be very, very interested. The outcome will help Prof Regan decide whether superfoods go into her supermarket trolley or not. Meanwhile, on to our next scientifically backed product. These products have been the best researched uh, functional foods products in the world. These are food products that are actually giving you more than just nutrition. They're actually also giving you a health benefit. These bold claims, implying that a food can have almost medicinal properties, are cholesterol-lowering drinks and spreads. <laughs> Nearly ten years ago, they made headline news. A new margarine to reduce cholesterol in the blood is to be launched in Britain. The brand was launched in...